When it came to recording videos inside of OBS, I've always felt like the quality was a little subpar. I've used other programs to record and I thought it looked pretty good, but they don't have the functionality and flexibility of OBS. I can't put my camera over my gameplay and I can't do a bunch of the really neat things you can do inside of OBS. Now with all the different plugins people come out with, the functionality of it is amazing, right? You wanna be able to record your gameplay, you want it to look amazing. You wanna be able to record your camera, you want it to look amazing. Well, we're gonna be covering some settings today. Settings that I've been tweaking and messing around with for probably the last decade inside of OBS to try to get the most optimal recording settings straight out of OBS. Just the best setting straight out, throw it into my video editing program, and it looks amazing. And I think you guys are going to be surprised because we're not just gonna be adjusting the same old things that you've always seen, of people adjusting the bit rate or the frame rate or the resolution and stuff like that. We're gonna talk about those, but we're also gonna talk about some of the other settings people typically shy away from whenever it comes to that. So let's go ahead and run that intro and get right into it. Before we dive into today's content, let's go ahead and pause for a moment to consider the value of making smart decisions. Speaking of which, we're thrilled to once again partner with Mint Mobile, the pioneers in transforming the wireless industry. They're dedicated to providing premium wireless service without that hefty price tag we've all come to dread. Ever find yourself puzzled by the sky-high cost of your wireless bill? Well, if so, Mint Mobile is on a mission to demonstrate that there's a smarter way to do things. For a limited time, new customers can enjoy any three-month plan for just $15 a month. That's correct. You were hearing that correctly. 50% off their unlimited plan. Imagine accessing the nation's largest 5G network, enjoying unlimited talk and text, and all the benefits of a high-tier wireless experience at half the cost. The transition to Mint Mobile is a breeze thanks to their eSIM technology. Many of you can seamlessly switch over from the comfort of your home in as little as 15 minutes. And for those of you that prefer a physical SIM card, Mint Mobile's got you covered there with a free SIM sent directly to your doorstep. Let go of the old, overpriced, and convoluted ways of wireless. Head over to trymintmobile.com forward slash how to tech to snag this incredible offer and get premium wireless for just $15 a month. My wife and I jumped on the Mint Mobile bandwagon over a year ago, and we've been fans ever since. Who can resist the allure of significant savings? What's going on guys? Chad here from How To Tech, and today we're gonna be doing something very different. We're gonna be messing with settings inside of OBS, and this is actually gonna contradict some of the things I've previously said in videos, probably like three or four years ago, talking about the best settings for recording, and it, that's just kind of how it works. Some of these settings do change and we find more optimal ways to do things. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and let's go ahead and get started with these settings. And as you can see, I'm actually recording. Let's disable this preview. I'm recording straight in OBS. And for those of you that might not know, I've always done this for probably, well, not always, but I've done this for like probably the past five or seven years. And this is my optimal workflow. And I love recording this way because it's super easy on me. So with that being said, um, if you guys wanna see a video on how I do this and how I record directly into OBS and it saves me a bunch of time from having to do all these camera masks and you know importing video footage from my computer and from my camera, all of that stuff separately, let me know in the comment section down below and we can make a dedicated video on that. So let's go ahead and disable this preview to get rid of the matrix or whatever inception effect that we've got going on here and get started with the first place we need to go, which is our settings. So let's go ahead and go to settings and we're gonna go to the most typical thing. The first thing I just kinda wanna cover is the video resolution. So this is going to be the resolution that we typically want to record at. We can adjust that if we need to but our base canvas resolution is the resolution of whatever this canvas is here inside of OBS. So even if we only had a computer that was, you know, with a monitor with 1080p and a camera that's 1080p, we can still make a 4K canvas if we want to, but we're gonna go ahead and leave it at 4K because that's what my camera's recording at, but set this to 1080p, set this to 1440p, whatever you plan on recording in, go ahead and set that there. 
and also the downscale filter. If you do plan on downscaling, try to figure out, depending on what you're doing, which downscale filter will work best for you because your mileage may vary and the performance is gonna be a little bit different on your computer as well as the quality. And also the FPS value. For most people, you're gonna want this at 30 or 60, but I do send my DSLR camera straight into OBS and I prefer that at 24 frames, so that's why I record my videos in 24 FPS as well. So there's that, just wanted to cover that real quick. Now let's jump over to the output settings. And the first thing I wanna mention is we're gonna change from advanced or from standard output mode to advanced. So go ahead and change that if you haven't already. Some of the stuff's grayed out for me because I am currently recording. Just thought I'd go ahead and say that. And then we want to bounce over to the recording tab. And this is where things get interesting. Things get fun and we can start messing around with some of the settings. And you might see a few things in here that are set up a certain way that most people necessarily wouldn't recommend. So right here, we've got a recording path that doesn't really matter. And then our video format. Typically in the past, I've recommended either MKV or MP4. MP4 is a very modern, or I wouldn't say modern, but it's an old but still widely used video container. And essentially what that means is that's how the video is kind of encoded and put together, um, essentially. It's kind of how that's all contained and together is considered an MP4 and MKV. And so some of the things that you would get benefits out of is with MP4 in the past, you got multi-track audio recording. I think MKV did that for you as well. And also MP4 is just widely accessible and you can upload it to basically any website. So that in itself is convenient. MKV is very useful because if for some reason OBS crashes while you're recording, well, that recording can still be recovered. So that is very useful in that sense. The reason I went with MOV is because I tend to get better video quality while using MOV and I upload all my videos to YouTube and they all go through my video editing program anyway and I output those videos back to MP4 anyway. So I'm going to make sure that I contain or retain the best video quality into my video editing program and then kind of adjust my settings there. So MOV is something I've seen a lot of success with as far as better video quality, less artifacting in the video in the background, and it just tends to look better. Now, talking about performance, the video encoder is probably the single most important thing whenever it comes to performance, and a lot of people actually get this wrong. Um, you definitely want to use your GPU. If you have a graphics card, even if you're playing a video game, a lot of the encoding that's done by those GPUs for something like this actually has dedicated encoding specifically for it. So if you've ever used anything like Shadowplay from NVIDIA that lets you record your gameplay, this is basically utilizing similar features and things of your GPU to be able to take that strain off of your graphics card and encode gameplay or videos while you're still using your GPU. So if you've got a NVIDIA GPU, let's go with NVENC. And if you have the option for NVENC New, go ahead and use that as well. And if you have AMD, you should see something like AVC Encoder with AMD Advanced Media Framework. And I would highly suggest using those over your CPU any day. So if you've got those options, go ahead and use that. If you only have X264, that means you only have CPU encoding, go ahead and use it and then adjust as you see fit to try to get the best quality possible. Um, but yeah, if you've got NVENC or if you've got an AMD GPU, use the NVIDIA or the AMD variant. Your mileage is going to be a lot better whenever it comes to that. For audio encoder, I just leave that on FFmpeg. I've not really seen any issues with that or had any problems. And then the other really nice thing about MOV is I can still do multi-track audio recording. If you guys don't know what that is, it basically gives me the ability inside my video editing program to individually adjust say, the volume or EQ preset for my microphone, my computer, and if I wanted to add Discord in here, I can do that and I can adjust all of those individually and separately. And I've got a video, like I said, just go ahead and click on that and check that out if you're interested in multi-track audio recording. Now the encoder settings kind of goes hand in hand with whatever video encoder you select. So keep that in mind, but also the recording format or the container is important as well. But whenever it comes to it, I think almost all of these support CQP encoding and CQP, in my opinion, hands down, 
is the best option I've used. It's basically similar to, and I'm kind of just generalizing here. So if any of you are like complete nerds whenever it comes to video encoding, please excuse me and definitely correct me if you need to in the comment section down below. But here's our options and we'll talk about why CQP is very important. So lossless is just going to be um, super high quality, but the file sizes are gonna be ginormous. And that's gonna be a problem if you throw it into any video editing program or if you try to upload it. Uh, CBR is stands for constant bitrate. That's what you've probably seen in most videos of people saying, hey, if you're recording at 1080p, set it to 12,000 um, on the bitrate and have it set to C, uh, CBR for constant bitrate. You can do that. It's just you sometimes whenever you're say on a menu or there's not much going on in a game that you're playing, you're encoding data for no reason whenever some of it can actually be a lot lower on the bitrate. And then we've got a thing called VBR, which stands for variable bit rate. And variable bit rate is exactly what it sounds like. It's kind of a range of where the bit rate can ramp up and ramp down based on what's on the screen. But based off of my testing and my recordings in the past, from what I can tell, CQP, uh, CQP seems to be the best balance of kind of all of these. I tend to get really good quality and my file sizes aren't ginormous. Even if I record for like 45 minutes, my files aren't huge. So that's very convenient. Whenever it comes to CQP, you set these levels um, and basically what I've found, and I've got a mid-range NVIDIA GPU, I've got a 3060, I've found that 19 works really well, and I can't remember off the top of my head, I'll put notes in the video on screen, um, I'll look this up too, but basically the lower or higher you go adjust the quality on this number, and there's kind of a range for that, and once you get to a certain range, CQP kind of becomes um, lossless quality as well, and the file sizes are going to be really big. So essentially, this is kind of the setup that I would recommend, is use CQP and figure out what level of CQP is going to work without basically tanking your computer while you're doing it. And also, I just wanted to go ahead and pull up Task Manager and kind of show you right now that as far as my CPU in memory, um, we're not using hardly any of it. I do have a bunch of tabs open for Google, which is the main reason why we're using 14 gigs of RAM. But as you can see on my GPU, well, we're, we're kind of doing good. I mean, the 3D, not really using much. Video encode we're using a lot, but if you were playing a video game, this doesn't really matter. All this other resources can be used for playing your game which means you're gonna see not that much of an impact. So there is all of that. And whenever it comes to the rest of this, this is kind of pretty much standard across the board. Um, if you're streaming, you'll probably have your keyframe interval set differently, but for the most part, zero is fine. And the preset of slow for good medium quality or for good quality seems to be fine. And then my tuning is set for high quality. And then two passes at quarter resolution seems to be very good from my testing and then profile main. And then the only thing I have checked is the psycho visual tuning GPU. If you have multiple GPUs in your system, you will set this relative to those GPUs. And actually let me open task manager back up and go to performance. And you can actually see right here, uh, the way computers work, zero is technically one, one is technically two, two is technically three. We start at zero whenever we're counting with computers. So if you've got multiple GPUs and you want to use a different GPU just for encoding, um, set that number relative to that. So if I had another GPU in here, I could look and see that, say I had a 3050 and as my second card, it would show as GPU one. I could actually set that to a one and it wouldn't use my main GPU that I use for gaming. So if some of you have multiple GPUs that want to throw a secondary GPU into your computer just for encoding, you can do that and it'll work out very well for you. So I know that was a lot of settings, but for the most part, it's not that difficult. The main things you really need to keep in mind is that MOV seems to have better recording quality. CQP typically is going to give you um, good quality video, really good quality video without having ginormous file sizes, and then selecting the encoder that's being used to either be a NVIDIA or AMD encoder is typically going to not bog down your computer as well and let you be able to play video games or do other things on your computer without those, you know, issues of everything kind of getting all, you know, stuttery or your game crashing or OBS crashing. So that's it. Um, 
I hope these settings were useful to you. I hope they were, um, that they take your quality to the next level inside of your OBS recordings. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna watch another video, check out this video here of where I talk about some other stuff inside of OBS that could be very useful to you if you plan on streaming.